special treat. So today we're at day two of Import Alliance here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We have Mark Johnson here. Uh, so let's just go and get into it. Sponsorship and how you went from uh, straight up you and your car into what we have today. So you want to go and touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So it's a unique situation. It's awesome. You know, I'm building this car. I had Fortunato and Blue Line Radiators help me build this car. That's the only people that helped me besides my father and my girlfriend. No other companies were on board. Uh, and then I go to uh, VR Hyperfest. Thank you, Hyperfest. I'm out there playing for the first time in the car and. The Exidy rep sees the car, he falls in love, we hit it off. We're friends now, and then this has brought me into the industry. 
industry. So I finally feel like I kind of made it into the industry. Yeah. Because now I have all these connections and friends and I'm growing relationships and that's just kind of how it happened. Yeah. The guy sees the car and he loved he loved my vision. He sees the vision in the car, he sees my vision. So we just we're teammates. Yeah, and it, it, it's crazy because sometimes you kind of get lucky on, on things like that, right? So you kind of happen to be in the right place at the right time, and uh, you know things kind of fall into place. So that kind of goes to show. Uh, sometimes if you're out there at a car show, you're not quite sure why you're doing, or you kind of lose vision of, of why you're doing things. It's kind of good just to just to go to see what happens. You know, like even today, I didn't expect to, to meet you yesterday because uh, I just came out here to IA just to go see my friend. So uh, and then here it is, we're we're talking about exciting questions and everything. So. My vision for this car was to get sponsored, was to get, you know, if I executed in it at the level that I wanted to, I knew this was going to happen. I yeah. just didn't know who it was going to be. Yeah. And the very first company that had the opportunity to jump on the car did, which is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely definitely a stroke of luck for sure. Uh, and like I said, right place, right time. Uh, hard work and dedication goes a lot long, uh, a lot further a lot of times too. So um, aside from your sponsorship, uh, let's actually talk about the car itself. So. For, for me, I've had like 10 of these chassis. So this, is, this is my favorite chassis. And another thing is light. Mm -hmm. It's one of the lightest on the planet. So I mean, if I can work on that and execute, Perfect. Mm. I didn't cut the corners. That was part of my deal. So for, for the chest, it was just lightweight. And, it, and you know, with the roll cage, I added it made it real small. Mm. I love the look of the, the OEM PGs. Mm. So that's why the bumper's still stock. The, 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 the backs are still in, and I wanted to keep the stock look. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to go away from the Honda. So it's kind of going to these uh, wild, crazy builds, a lot of wide bodies, a lot of like, um, you know, battle arrows, stuff like that, like all this like crazy arrows, stuff like that. But for me personally, uh, and I think maybe you're in the same camp, but the factory made the car that way for a reason, right? And uh, back in the day, those cars were just monsters on the track anyway. So, you know, why mess with a good thing? There's only so much you can improve. The only thing I really had to do, you know, I need the, the big wheels and the big rubber. So, you know, I did put one of the bigger wheels on it to get the big rubber. And then I had to make, you know, bigger fenders and then yeah. to cover that. But I, so I still tried to keep that. Yeah. I'm the OEM look yeah. that we all love, you know. For sure. And, like, that's kind of how it is with me and the Mitsubishi, right? So the Mitsubishi is stock interior for right now. Like, excuse me, I, I don't tend to, like, rip out, you know, mess the things. I might take out the rear seat. You know, I might flock the dash just so I can get cut down on the glare. But... I mean, it works, you know, yeah, for some works. reason. So. When you were building this car, you were mentioning you were on a rotisserie. So what was the purpose behind being on a rotisserie? You know, I didn't have a lift. And, and for me, it was a dream. I just, I just, years ago, I was like, I have a CRX. I've had 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked on it so many times, you know, on jack stands, crawl under it, yeah. and working like this. And I'm like, you know what? In order to build, you know, car like this, it would be so much easier to have it on the rotisserie. So, yeah. so you can turn that rotisserie, you know, you can put it in 180 degrees, yeah. 50 degrees, or 90 degrees, and get into areas that, you know, normally you might, you know how like when your car's on the ground and you got to, you, you piece under the dash and you get under there with your legs up in there. Yeah, I know that feeling. I didn't have to do none of that. Yeah. I just rotate <laughs> the car, get in there and do what I got to do. So it, it made everything easier. Yeah, I know for me right now, uh, I have a two-car garage and, uh, you know, it comes from a place of privilege to be able to say that, but uh, it is a pain in the ass because the car's on jack stands. Uh, you know, I've got, uh, as, as some of you guys know, right, so I used to work on heavy-duty trucks, so I still have some of the jack stands I used to use. Uh, they're, you know, 12-ton jack stands, so they're a lot, lot taller, so it makes, makes it a little bit easier, but I swear, man, being on a creeper on your back sucks still. So, yeah, I've done that method, you know, getting the jack stands and then put something underneath the jack stands <laughs> raise it up. Yeah. Actually, my CRX is on jack stands, mm -hmm. so I don't have the, the stuff to mount the CRX mm -hmm. onto the rotisserie. Yeah, so I'm kind of stuck on the ground again. <laughs> but it's not that much work. So. Yeah, it's not so bad. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, passion, uh, passion for the car, and, and like clear goals, uh, which you've definitely had, have, have you know, kind of continued that and, uh, yeah, for you. So, so. Yeah, this, I mean, this was 100 percent A to Z. Do yeah. it right. Do everything. Don't cut no corners. And trust me, there were times I was like. 
stay focused. It's not easy. And, and then, you know, when you're two years into it, it it's, you want to just get it done so oh, yeah. you start throwing stuff on it. And oh, I didn't yeah. do that with this build. Yeah. That's one reason why this car replaced the Civic hatchback I had before. This is the same motor and trans that was in another car. And yeah. People ask me the details. It's been so long, I kind of forgot. Yeah, yeah. I remember I some of it, but I'm like, oh no, they asked me what's inside the motor. And I'm like, maybe I can remember. Because <laughs> it's been, it's yeah. been like eight years, man. Uh, what, what, we're definitely not going to go too far into it because I know there, there may be a little bit of secret sauce in there that you don't want to find. There's some sauce in there. <laughs> there's, some, there's some sauce in the whole car, you know. Yeah, for sure. And uh, another reason why I like this build so much is because uh, it's almost like there's a bunch of little Easter eggs you have to kind of spot with the car, right? So you have to really look forward. You have to I don't really think know what you're looking for. Yeah, I like. Yeah, that's the type of builder I am. Yeah. So you like, kind of want to play like a little touch people everywhere. People find this, and then they find this, and then like I've had some like really big name people come look at the car, especially at CRI. Yeah. And they didn't find everything, and I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely something I like too with the with the Evo, because like you know JDM tail lights, JDM bumpers, like all the the normal things that people put on their car. Yeah, like everybody's got it. But it's the uh, the craftsmanship and the, the care that you put into it, like stitching, for example, right? So I, I rewrapped my steering wheel, but I rewrapped it in my company colors. You know, I, I rewrapped nice. so the orange. Yeah, okay. yeah, or, orange and black. Uh, I'm gonna block the dash for like an Alcantara feel, so I can cut down on on the right. glare. Black, yeah. Everybody sees it as like, oh, that's a Piece, but there's purpose behind it. You know? yeah, we all yeah, and it, and it's, that's another reason like why I like there's, that. There's a lot of those in this car. And I, I don't really like to tell it. I like people to find it. If they find it, I can respect them because they can yeah. kind of see my vision. You know? Yeah, for sure. Like you were you were mentioning a lot of the carbon fiber pieces. You said how many uh, carbon fiber pieces were there? I think my count is right. I made 50 pieces, mm -hmm. and 49 are on the car. And on my golf car. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Right on. So. What was it? So you learned it all from scratch, or how did you learn it's to do class. carbon fiber? I paid a guy to make a rear diffuser. Mm -hmm. I gave him my money. He was going to sponsor me and make everything carbon for me. We had a deal worked out. Mm -hmm. He didn't come through. He didn't send me the part. I got my money back. I started watching YouTube, and I learned how to do my own part. Man, that's, that's, I, I love that. I and love that. It's yeah. awesome because now I know what it costs. Mm -hmm. I understand why people want so much for it because the cost of the carbon very labor intensive. Like the two side skirts, you have to have a mold, mm -hmm. and then, then you have to do the carbon part work, and that takes like three days. Yeah. Just to execute the two parts, yeah. it takes three days. Yeah, I was, uh, was going to make a carbon fiber air box, and then uh, I started looking at the prices, I'm like, yeah, I can do this. Oh, that's not that bad, I can do that. And it started adding up, I'm like, uh, it's still kind of cost effective right now. And then I look at the time it will cost me in labor. Uh, just to execute it, and it's, I was like, if the parts yeah. this big or the parts this big, it's yeah, basically the same work. The bigger the parts are, it's harder to lay it because you start getting separation and stuff that I learned, and it makes it hard to keep it look good. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you learned it on your own, uh, like that, like that's, that's wild to me. So this is this is what happened. The, the guy doesn't give me the part. We learned how to do it on YouTube, mm -hmm. but the car would have been done. Mm -hmm. A whole year sooner. Yeah, but when falls, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make my own carbon. Mm. It took me a whole year to make and learn to make those 50 pieces. Time, time, and effort put into it. Uh, it's definitely paid off thus far. So. Uh, I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah, That's for all. sure. My motto is on my Instagram, Rocket E36. Enjoy the build. Yeah, the build is not done. Don't ever think it's done. Yeah, it'll never be done. And that's, that's how it is at Cos Garage. So our, our saying is the soul of the build, right? And build everything with purpose for the soul. This, this is a big soul. It yeah. has our soul. It has I, I, can, soul. I can definitely tell. And I'm, I'm glad that you are able to impart you know, yourself into the build. So it definitely yeah. shows through. See, this uh, this right here, this exhaust tip, <laughs> that's pretty dope. So the exhaust was right here, uh -huh. like two weeks ago. <laughs> and then Vibrant, they helped me. They gave me all new pipe. The radiator was back here. Okay. So, so did it used to sit under here? Or? So yeah, the radiator took this whole space up. Okay. So just a few weeks ago. So the reason for the change is the exhaust was inside the car, exiting right here. Mm. And me and her did a YouTube video with two guys from Chicago. They flew down, BB Speed, and they recorded the car. And we were driving around the street. So we got street rollers before the wrap, mm. which is, you know, I love it because it's still my car at that point. Yeah. But we learned that the exhaust is so loud 
like I took it and raced it. It's not that bad with a helmet on, but yeah. just street driving is so it's bad. It resonates. Yeah. yeah. So, in order for me to put the exhaust down here, I had to take the, the radiator, the rear mount radiator out to fit the exhaust. So that's what the changes is happening here. That's so when you were on the track, you didn't have enough. You didn't have any issues cooling back here with uh, no. the radiator being in the rear. Ah, that's really, that stressed me out because I know a lot of the Formula D guys uh, rear, run rear radiators for, you know, safety and, and cooling, they, but... They, they beat the crap out of them. They don't have issues. Yeah. But I had, it was a radiator and then the lines run down the side and then it had an electric pump over here, but I had to cut all that out. And it's kind of cool because the car saved like 50 pounds by taking the rear mount radiator out because of the lines and the cooling yeah. and the pump. Over yeah. 50 pounds of weight savings. That seems, that seems a lot. Uh, wh why we're back here, can you explain one more time about this camera and this is the other camera right here, right? This this camera right here, this, mm -hmm. this is on. When I'm racing, this is always on and it just, instead of having a rear view mirror like you normally would, that's my rear view mirror. Because I can see you a lot better trying to look out. There's no side mirrors, so this just gives me a clear view of what's behind me. And then the other one is, is for um, data lock purposes. Okay. Right on. So, yeah, I like. I love how it's uh, molded in there. It almost looks. Uh, it almost looks factory. Actually, this is where the the trunk key would be. Oh, and right. I just drilled it out a little and put it in there. So that's clever. It, it fit good. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely clever. Love how clean it is. Cool. Is there anybody in particular you want to shout out or anything you want to say your props to? I have so many people to thank and I'll try to get all you guys. But yes, sir. Exidy, thank you for having me at Import Alliance and Bobby Performance. We love you guys. Uh, especially OMP, Radio, uh, Fuel Lab, Deep, Drive Shaft Shop, uh, All Performance, Fortunato. Yeah. Uh, the list goes on, man. Yeah, for sure. Anti Gravity. I love you guys. Thank you all. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Do you, uh, you have any social media for the car or for anything like just, that? Just Rocket EG6, man. All right, there you guys have it. Rocket EG6. So go ahead and follow them on all the social media platforms. I want to thank your time again, Mark. Yeah, I really man. appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, like I said, we'll, we'll definitely go ahead and enjoy the show. So as always, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>